You're watching Ruroni K95's anime review on Mary and the Witch's Flower. Hi, Ruronis. This is your pal Ruroni K95 here. Today's anime review, we're in for a treat, which we got to cover a brand new anime review, which is an anime movie from 2017. For today's anime review is Mary and the Witch's Flower. Mary and the Witch's Flower is a 2017 Japanese anime fantasy film directed by Hiromasa Yonibayashi and produced by Studio Ponok founder Yoshiaki Nishimura, who are basically the guys who worked at Studio Ghibli, animated by Studio Ponok and distributed by Toho Company Limited in Japan, based on the 1971 book the Little Broomstick by Mary Stewart. This is Studio Onok's first feature film. So let's review Mary and the Witch's Flower. So let's begin here. Mary Smith moves into the northern English country east state of her great aunt Charlotte. The bored friendless girl tries to make herself useful through chores but repeatedly messes up a local boy named Peter, teases her for her clumsiness and, and wild red hair. Tibcat and Gibcat, Peter's cats led to Mary to f some mysterious glowing flowers. The gardener identifies the flowers as fly by night. Legend has it that witches covet the flower for its magical power. The next day, Gibcat uh, disappears. Tibcat let Ed's Mary to a broomstick, but she accidentally bursts a fly by night bulb on it. The bulb releases magical power, making the broomstick come to life, and enabling Mary to ride it like a witch. The little broomstick whisks Mary away to a complex of buildings in the clouds, known as Endor College for Witches. Headmistress Madame Mumblechook assumes Mary as a new pupil with Tibcat as her familiar and takes her on a tour of the college. She introduces Mary to Dr. D, the college's renowned chemistry teacher. Mary finds herself able to perform advanced spells as such as of invisibility. Madame and Dr. D become convinced that Mary is a progeny because of her performance as well as her red hair, which is distinguishing feature among the best witches. Mary admits that her magical ability comes from Fly by Night and that Tib Cat belongs to Peter. Madame's attitude changes then, but she lets Mary return home once. Mary turns over Peter's address that night. Madame sends a message to Mary informing that she's kidnapped Peter and demands that Mary bring the fly by night bulbs to her. At this point, you two guessed it. Yeah. She and Tibcat quickly fly by back to Endor with all bulbs. But Madame and Dr. D imprison her, her and their transformation lab, Mary finds Peter locked in with her and discovers that Dr. D has been experimenting on animals, including Gibcat, transforming them into a fantastic creatures from the spell book she took from Madame's office. Mary uses a spell to undo the transformations and unlock the lab, which is almost not in, almost in a serious possible way. They try to escape on the little broomstick, but Peter is recaptured. By this time, the little broomstick takes Mary into an isolated cottage on a tiny island that seems to be alive inside the college. Mary finds notes on the spells and a mirror. The great Aunt Charlotte uses to contact her through visions, which is almost in a good way hey, at this point. Charlotte reveals that the cottage was her old home, and she used by a red pu hair pupil who exiled at Endor. You guessed it. One day, Charlotte found Fly by Night on the campus, leading Madame and Dr. D to obsessively pursue a project to use the flower to transform all humans into witches, which is basically like a spell. When their experiments failed, 
Charlotte escaped Endor, taking the flower with her. Charlotte begs Mary to use her last bulbs to return home. But Mary vows to rescue Peter at this point. So Mary in returns to Endor and finds Madame and Dr. D trying to transform Peter into a witch. The experiment fails again, leaving Peter trapped within a gelatinous monster, which is almost not in a good way. Mary gets a spell book to Peter, and he uses it to undo the failed experiment and all of Madame and Dr. D's research. You get what you heard from about this research. Above of all this, Mary and Peter fly home with her throwing away her last bulb and she's uh, and saying she does not to read need magic at uh, this point, if she will. And that is my review on the plot about the anime movie Mary and the Witch's Flower. Because the film tells a story of a girl named Mary Smith who finds fly by night on a mysterious flower that can give her the power to become a witch only for one night in this anime movie. And yes, this anime movie was released in Japan on July 8th, 2017 as well, which includes the English language version of the film, which is current concurrently released with a subtitled version in the United States on January 19th, 2018. The film features the voices of Ruby Barnhill, Kate Winslet, and Joe M. Broadbent. So for the production about Mary and the Witch's Flower, on December 15th, 2016, Yone Bayashi and Nishimura held a press conference here. Yone Bayashi, who had previously worked with Studio Ghibli on their, those movies they were known for, such as When Marnie Was There and The Secret World of Arietti, said that this is the first movie since leaving Studio Ghibli at Studio Ponok. We are working diligently with Yoshiaki Nishimura, a producer, and with excellent staff as well. Because this was probably made by the creators who used to work for Studio Ghibli, which is probably until they left Studio Ghibli when they went on doing Mary and the Witch's Flower, particularly, which this has a lot to do with. If for those, if you've ever been a fan of either Mary and the Witch's Flower, or if you've been a fan of many of certain anime movies that were made by Studio Ghibli, even the ones that were especially directed by Hayao Miyazaki or Isao Takahata in general, which you have a lot to do for for this particular anime, like Mary and the Witch's Flower, because we'll get to that in just a moment. When Ishimura was asked about the establishment of the new studio, he said, When the Studio Ghibli producer Toshio Suzuki notified me about the dissolution of the Ghibli production pro department, I was stimulated by the overseas creators, and I went to the Academy Awards venue with the tale of Princess Kaguya. Remember that you received it? After announcing it was aced on the little broomstick, Nishimura said, Mar Marnie of Memories is a work that provided that Yonish Bayashi with XLs at Dynamic Painting seal his specialty and can draw trivial emotions. But as a producer, I want to see dynamic animation, so I decided to do a fantasy with a cheerful girl moving around. When asked if he consulted with e either Isao Takahata or Hayao Miyazaki, and he said he did not show Miyazaki any storyboards, but he did talk to him. They both said the same thing. Be prepared. Yanni Bayashi announced the voice actors on April 13th, 2017, particularly when they made Mary and the Witch's Flower. But for the release of Mary and the Witch's Flower, however... Mary and the Witch's Flower was released theatrically in Japan on July 8, 2017 by distributor Toho Company Limited, airing on 500, 458 screens across Japan. Altitude Film Sales announced that at the Berlin International Film Festival that it acquired the worldwide rights to the film and would release it in, within the UK. Madman Entertainment announced that they had secured the rights to the film within Australia and most likely New Zealand and would premiere theatrically at the Madman Anime Festival in Melbourne on November 4th, 5th, 2017 with a wider release on 
January 18th, 2018. And G Kids later announced that it would distribute the film within North America with a one week qualifying run on December 1st, 2017, a limited opening on January 18th, 2018, and a wider release on January 19th, 2018. Altitude, the UK distributor, confirmed in early March 2018 that the film would have a long special holding at Selected View Cinemas on April 10th, 2018, before its original official, the official UK wide release on May 4th, 2018 as well. The English dub of Mary and the Witch's Flower was directed by Giles New and produced by Jeffrey Wilkes. The English dub was recorded in July and August 2017 in London, and it had its premiere on Los Angeles October 23rd, 2017, at the G-Kids Animation Film Festival. On August 31st, 2018, the first broadcast was performed on NTV's Friday Roadshow as well. And yes... Marianne the Witch's Flower has grossed about $2.4 million in the United States and Canada, $38.6 million in other territories, including $27.6 million in Japan, $3.8 million in South Korea, $2.9 million in China, and as most likely, $2.6 million in France for a worldwide total of $41 million. In Japan, the film will... Uh, Open at a second place, grossing 428 million yen, as it was to 3.9 million U.S. dollars during its opening weekend. There was an increase compared to Yoni Bayashi's previous film, When Marnie Was There, which has grossed about 378.86 yen when its first weekend. Because the anime movie, Mary and the Witch's Flower, has basically to the extent to Kiki's Delivery Service. In the United States, the film held a special Thursday night preview on January 18th, 2018, where it grossed about $1.2 million from 573 theaters. It then stayed at 161 theaters over the weekend and grossed about $329,197, bringing its four-day gross to $1.5 million as well, particularly for this anime. And yes, because... For an anime movie like Mary and the Witch's Flower, however, these were made by the guys who used to work at Studio Ghibli, which is n known for their work her, now they were known for as Studio Punk as well. Because this is particularly your typical anime movie, which is part, probably part, became Studio Punk's first feature film for an anime movie like Mary and the Witch's Flower. I mean, the characters I know in Mary and the Witch's Flower, however, you know, like Tib Cat and, you know, the characters Mary and, you know, Tib Cat, they're both similar to the other that is basically familiar. If you could, that is very basically inspired to the similarities that you spec from Kiki's Delivery Service, particularly in what you see in Mary and the Witch's Flower. If you ever wa either watched both, Kiki's Delivery Service or Mary and the Witch's Flower at the same time. I mean, if you like Kiki's Delivery Service, you might check out Mary and the Witch's Flower because this is your typical movie you want an anime movie if you want to check out that you like if you you liked Kiki's Delivery Service. So that's going to be it for my anime review on Mary and the Witch's Flower for today's anime review. Thank you for watching, but before we go, here's my thoughts on this. When I first watched this, I really enjoyed it because you know, this is particularly very similar to Kiki's Delivery Service because I call it to the extent to other Studio Ghibli films in general, particularly. I mean, if you like Mer Kiki's Delivery Service, I highly recommend you to check out Mary and the Witch's Flower. Hope to subscribe for content. My anime plan link in the description all below. You can share this video on your Twitter or Facebook if you have Twitter or Facebook account and all the social media. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up by clicking on the like button on this video. Feel free to leave in the comments in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, RuinyK95. Feel free to join my channel, especially if you're new to my channel. Hit the notifications bell. Be sure to get notified. Keep it otaku for this anime review, and I got another anime review coming up next. What I have. Stay tuned for my next anime review. I got another anime series that I haven't reviewed for tomorrow's anime review on Library War. Stay tuned for my next anime review on Library War, because you won't want to miss another anime review.